All right, thanks for the introduction. Uh, this is joint work with my colleagues Giovanni, who is now at Microsoft Research, and Carmela from EPFL. So Tor is an anonymous communication system that provides anonymity to its users. To achieve anonymity, users build uh, circuits through the Tor network that start with an entry relay and end with an exit relay. Once the circuit is built, the client um, instructs the exit relay to connect to internet destinations. One of the most devastating attacks against the Tor network are those that de-anonymize Tor users. And in particular, there's a website fingerprinting attack which can de-anonymize users with only access to the entry side by observing the patterns of traffic, of encrypted traffic sent between the client and the Tor network and predicting the website visited by the user. In order to conduct this attack, the adversary uses machine learning but needs to have the labels to train the machine learning classifiers for website prediction. But because Tor encrypts traffic, the adversary doesn't have access to the labels directly in the network because the genuine labels are encrypted. So to get around this, the adversary must obtain these labels some way. So the traditional website fingerprinting threat model uh, says the adversary will just crawl a bunch of websites through the Tor network, building its own circuits, and then it has access to the labels because it, it picks which URLs to crawl. And so it can, it can create uh, labels and data sequences, traffic patterns, put those into a database, and then it can train machine learning classifiers using these collected data and labels. And then um, when it wants to use these against real users, it can observe users' traffic, query this model that was trained previously and predict the website that the users are visiting. So in this paper, we argue that this synthetic model is too simplistic and unrealistic for the real world. This has also been shown in previous research. Uh, the browser that the, user, that the adversary would use to crawl is pinned usually to a specific version or a specific configuration, or the crawl is conducted from a small set of locations uh, geographically. Uh, the, the crawler doesn't reproduce the behavior that clients would in the real network. The choice of the URLs to crawl, if they're using multiple tabs, the order that they're browsing pages, those are all choices that would be make, made in the synthetic model. And then the world that's considered under this threat model is usually static, where the adversary crawls a bunch of websites and then considers that uh, its world. It's usually smaller than what we consider accessible in the real world and is often closed uh, in these evaluations. So nobody really knows if website fingerprinting is viable in the real world because it's never been done before. So in this paper, uh, we're proposing to throw away the synthetic model and instead use a genuine model for website fingerprinting where we can consider genuine data and labels from a Tor exit relay. And this will give us an understanding of the threat of the attack in the real world. So the key insight in this model is that an adversary can run an exit relay. Exit relays can be run by anyone. It's a volunteer network. So the adversary could run one. And as regular clients on using the Tor network build circuits, they will occasionally choose the exit relay in their circuits. The exit can observe the circuit um, and then it will observe a DNS lookup for whatever websites the adversaries are browsing. And then it'll observe the website load. So the DNS lookup, the resolved domain, provides a genuine label. And the traffic patterns of the website load will provide the genuine data that the adversary can use um, then to train the machine learning classifiers as before and deploy them against users in a de-anonymization attack as before. So this is the, uh, what I call the genuine model. The benefits should be clear. It captures the real world diversity of all the browsers, the behavior of the users on the network, the world size, which URLs browsers, uh, users are, are visiting, if they're using tabs, et cetera. It captures the natural diversity of this because we're measuring the real network. And it allows us researchers to stop trying to fix all of the problems with the synthetic model and just focus on um, the actual threat in the real network. Some caveats here. Uh, the, in this model, the exit would be getting the data and the labels 
sorry, the adversary would be getting the data and the labels from the exit relay and deploying it on the opposite side of the circuit at the entry relay. And so this will cause some noise uh, in their machine learning problem that we'll have to quantify. Also, um, they're getting the domain that was looked up when for each different page. So this, is, this can be considered website fingerprinting or domain fingerprinting, not web page fingerprinting, if there's a difference. And then this is not ethical to do this in a, a, for researchers to do this. So we need safe evaluation methods. And so that's what we were focused on in this paper. So we came up with a safe evaluation method, and I'll go over this. First, we add code to Tor to protect the websites that are being visited, the domains, using a keyed HMAC. So Tor will HMAC the domain label before sending it out to our scripts. So when we receive the, the website, it's a pseudonym. It's a random number, not the actual uh, domain. So we never learn the true labels. And then we get a, a sequence of plus ones, minus ones, where plus one means a packet or a Tor cell in one direction, minus one means a, a cell in the other direction. So we're getting directionality and a pseudonym random number representing a specific web page. Then we adapted, uh, we use online learning by adapting uh, the triplet fingerprinting attack from CCS 2019. This attack is split into two parts. There's a, a feature extractor, which takes the raw data sequences and turns it into a feature vector. And so we take that vector and then we do two things. First, we predict the label for that vector using the KNN model from the triplet fingerprinting uh, work. And then the output of that prediction we can use to evaluate how well our classifier is doing, if it's correct or not. And then second, we take the feature vector and the label, we have both of them, and update our KNN embedded vectors so that we can better predict future visits to that domain. Some other safety precautions. We were doing this at the exit relay. We have never, never observed users directly, so we never de-anonymize Tor users. This information is accessible uh, on exit relays. So we're not doing anything beyond what an exit relay could do inside of Tor's threat model. Also, we destroyed the models and the HMAC key after our evaluation, so we cannot reproduce these results directly. And we have no way to reverse the pseudonyms or anything um, that we use in the evaluation. We ran our evaluation plan past the Tor Safety Board. They gave us feedback. Uh, please see the paper if you, have, if you want to see more about that um, interaction. Okay, so for evaluation, we have a couple of different components. First, we're gonna train and evaluate this approach at an exit relay under the model I just described. So in this case, there's no noise from transferring the model to the entry. So this is, can be considered an upper bound on the attack accuracy. We conducted an evaluation for one week during which we measured 3.9 million data sequences across 671,000 unique sites. We conducted a multi-class classification problem where we predict either one of a set of monitored sites or unmonitored. And the performance metric we use here is instant accuracy, which is somewhat like a moving average. It's the number of correct guesses over, over the total number of guesses over a sliding window. So here are the results. The x-axis is the number of network traces that we are observing and that are informing our model. So as you get to the right side of the x-axis, we're seeing more and more traces. The y-axis is the accuracy. So the first point to make here is that when the adversary, oh, sorry, the legend shows the size of the monitored set that the adversary's uh, sites they're trying to predict. So when the monitored site set is small, we see accuracy is above 95% with five or fewer sites. But when the monitored size, set size increases, accuracy quickly falls below 80%, uh, which does perform worse than what was shown in the traditional model in past work. So we think this uh, is a more reasonable representation of the, the actual threat on the live network. Okay, the second thing we wanted to explore is how useful is genuine data compared to synthetic data in conducting this attack? So this involves two phases. First, 
an offline phase where we crawl a list of URLs taken from previous research. This is a synthetic list. Uh, this is a synthetic model. We use that, those sequences to train an, a classifier as done in previous work. And in an online phase, we take a copy of that synthetic model and allow it to be updated with genuine data from the exit. So that's the hybrid model. And then the final model is a real model trained only on genuine data. Uh, we conducted an evaluation here for one week. We, ob we observed 1.2 million data sequences during the evaluation. And in this case, we were only interested in the uh, domains from our synthetic crawl, because those were the ones we were gonna compare against, and we observed 183 of those synthetic domains. This is a binary classification where the monitored set contains five sites and we're predicting either monitored or unmonitored. This graph shows a precision recall curves for the three models. Uh, the synthetic uh, results are the green dashed line at the bottom. We can see that the synthetic classifier trained only on synthetic data performs poorly when it's deployed against genuine data in the real world. Second, the other two models, uh, the synthetic and the hybrid model, or sorry, the real and the hybrid model, show that synthetic data doesn't improve the model over genuine data. So what we find here is if the adversary is gonna deploy the model on genuine data in the real world, then it should be trained on genuine data in the real world. Finally, we're interested in what the loss in accuracy is from training on the exit and moving to the entry side. So we evaluated this. Um, in order to do this, and to be safe, this has to be a fully synthetic evaluation because we're gonna be doing predictions on the client side. So we crawled uh, 1,000 URLs, again, from previous research, uh, 10 times each. We pinned our entry and our exit on each circuit so that we have the same uh, traffic patterns on the same circuit. And we collected uh, the data sequences from both positions. And then this is a closed world batch classification problem with a 50-50 train test split. The table shows the results. Uh, you can focus on the bottom row, and we find that for monitored set sizes that are um, feasible in the real world, so sets of size five, we see a relatively low loss in accuracy, about 4.8%. And then as the size of the monitored set increases to 50 and 750, we see 11 and 18% loss in accuracy by moving to the opposite side of the circuit. So then I wanna note that we didn't do any optimizations here. We didn't try to account for any of these things. We just took the triplet fingerprinting work and pretty much applied it directly. So future work is to try to make this attack, see how accurate this attack can be made if we we're focused exactly on improving the accuracy or increasing distortion. Um, another future area is how can we design defenses in this model and so that they work in the real world. One of the insights I want to share is that I think simple defenses may be more effective than we thought because not only does the adversary have to defend uh, or attack the defended traces, so traces that are padded, but it also has to simulate the defense on top of the data that it would collect at an exit relay, which is an extra step and might be more difficult. So that's all I have. I'll stop there. Please read the paper. There's a lot more details, and otherwise I'll take questions.